to uh, Graham Morris MP, who's going to address the meeting. Uh, thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, I, I do want to bring um, greetings not just from the RMT parliamentary group, but also from um, Unite and uh, uh, welcome also to uh, the GMB, who I understand are uh, supporting this um, um, lobby today. I, I was reflecting upon the efforts that we've made uh, in recent times. And I was just looking back at an German debate that we had. I think it was in April of last year, where we did warn about the dangers of deregulation to the, uh, particularly to the licensed taxi trade, to the hackney trade. And we had extensive meetings then with the Susie Lampu Trust, you know, with various um, organisations who raised concerns about personal safety. We also pointed out to ministers at that time, and to remember they were trying to push it through without effective consultation, when the Law Commission had been um, established to carry out a, an in-depth study, but they wanted to force it through even before the Law Commission had reported that this represented a clear and present danger, not only to the gold standard that we enjoy with licensed taxis, but to public safety, and they could prove that. And, and frankly, in those days, Uber, which is the kind of the dim and distant threat, I don't think it they establish themselves on our smartphones or, or, uh, or come into the, the UK at the time. So what we want to do is preserve this gold standard, this, this uh, uh, taxi trade that we have, not least on the grounds of public safety and the safety of people who are vulnerable. I particularly worry for, for women who are travelling home uh, late in the evening, perhaps finishing work or for a night out, and they can be assured if they have a a, a licensed car, that the necessary checks have been done, CRB, the car's properly insured, it's properly maintained. That isn't always the case, and there have been some absolute terrible reports about the standard of driving, about the lack of insurance cover, um, about overcharging, as, uh, uh, as the Assistant General Secretary Steve's just said in the recent um, joint trade union dispute. So it is important that we point these advantages out to ministers. And also the fact that so many of our um, uh, black cabs and, and hackney cabs have got disabled access. You know, of course, the, the, the accessibility issue is a really important one, uh, and one that many of the private hire vehicles can't offer. In, in fact, the Law Commission, I was looking at their report, they said that of private hire vehicles, only 3% are actually uh, uh, adapted <coughs> to be able to take disabled passengers. We shouldn't also forget the contribution that the taxi trade make to the economy. I mean, they also provide a safe and regulated and efficient uh, public service. There's 78,000 licensed taxis in England and Wales, and 22,500 in London alone. But the value, you know, we often talk about growing the economy and uh, 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 encouraging profitable businesses, but just the London taxi business, taxi trade alone, contributed £150 million to the UK economy, and that was just on fuel, on diesel and lubricants, £25 million on spare parts and accessories, £10 million was spent on tyres, and £12 million on insurance, and £5 million on batteries, not to mention the millions of pounds that we come into the local economy through advertising, both in the taxis and on them. So it's an important contribution to the economy. And Boris Johnson, the government, should recognise and value that and protect the trade. And um, what we also should know that it's a, it's a profitable uh, um, industry. You know, we, we often hear the government saying uh, what a wonderful model the privatised rail services are. But that actually costs the exchequer, well we'll disagree with that quite fundamentally, but that actually costs the exchequer £3.7 billion pounds a year in subsidies. The taxi trade doesn't cost a penny and they operate an extremely efficient service. What we're going to see, if we're not really careful, if we're not vigilant, is a two-tier system. You know, where we have the, the, uh, the hackneys and we, the private hire. And if the government believe the defining characteristic of a taxi is that it takes 
and minty tirings, whereas Uber and the private hire vehicles have got to be booked through an operator. It's absolutely clear, if it wasn't before, that with the advent of new technology and smartphones and some of these apps, there is an absolute blurring. And the, the, if, if we don't check that, the huge investment that you've made in terms of your own money, in terms of your own time, in gaining the knowledge, the understanding of the, the areas where you're from, from London or Leicester, or, you know, from, from the, the, uh, the local area where you are, that is a very important investment and one that's of value to the public, the travelling public. So we need to maintain those standards. And uh, you know, there is a risk that they would be, be damaged. What we're trying to do in Parliament, you know, working with uh, the RMT and through uh, the RM2T group that John chairs is, we've tabled a, a, an EDM, it's EDM 142. So for your own um, lobbying efforts this afternoon, if you could encourage your own MPs, if you haven't done so already, to sign that EDM because it's an expression of support and it addresses the issues that Steve had raised earlier about clearly defining this um, applying for hire, because that's the very essence of what taxis do uh, and has been so since, the, uh, since their inception. And clearly, you know, these, these Uber apps and there are others are blurring the distinction between taxis and private hire vehicles. And there is a concern that Uber uh, are attempting to casualise and weaken the profession and the safe licensing trade we did have some figures that were extensively quoted during the deregulation bill about the number of, of attacks, especially in London, uh, and uh, you know, where, where the travelling public have used um, road taxis, unlicensed taxis, as well as uh, um, uh, private hire vehicles. It's very much more difficult, if not possible, uh, if they're using proper registered uh, hacking licences. And we've also seen some of the techniques that Uber and others are introducing the certain bed for legislation, especially in London, uh, these satellite offices, you know, where you can, you can see queues uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, private hire vehicles lining up that have been apparently pre booked So taxi drivers' rights to private hire is being severely infringed by these practices, and now their right to be held in the street is also apparently being emulated by, uh, through the use of these, uh, uh, these smart devices. Hearing is an exclusive right for licensed taxis. And e-hearing, if that's what we call it, where, where, in, uh, where a taxi is hailed in real time with the use of a, a smartphone device, uh, you know, showing where the avail available uh, vehicles are on a map, is tantamount to applying for hire. You know, it's an infringement of the whole raison d'etre, the whole reason for being for, for the, the taxi trade. So we've got an opportunity um, with um, a TfL um, to try and press this point and you know, to try and impress upon them the need for a clear definition. And so if private hire vehicles through the use of new technology, through the use of these uh, uh, smartphone apps, can get away with it, certainly will. So what we believe, uh, you know, in common with um, the RMT, United, the GMB, is what we need is a robust definition of flying for hire. And we need that written down in the statute. It's long overdue, and it's something that we've kind of resisted, but the advent of technology has made that all the more important. And we must do that if we're going to um, be able to sustain a, a, a two-tier system where private hire is quite separate and distinct from, from, from hackney cabs. That's not to denigrate the role of private hire vehicles if they're operated according to the, the rules and regulations, but 